Good afternoon and welcome to What's In It For Africa. Do you have any questions? Yes. Would you speak about energy? Definitely. What about economics? Yes, for sure. What about climate change? Definitely. Yes, but what's in it for Africa? Well, you'll find out. Hello and welcome to What's In It For Africa, the EU Africa update show with me, Uzo Madu. On the show this month, EU discussions around granting China market economy status, the Southern African Development Community's Economic Partnership Agreement with the European Union is published, the EU's gas package is under discussion and the EU milk crisis. Also, Tarila Abiyade from the European Centre for Development Policy Management is going to take us through what's on the EU Africa agenda in June. So, let's get started. The EU is set to take its position on whether to grant China market economy status at the World Trade Organization when it's up for review in December. According to WTO rules, a market economy status is when a country's investment and production is based on rules of supply and demand rather than government command and control, for example, through subsidies. Granting China market economy status could fundamentally change the European Union's relationship with its second biggest trading partner. With no market economy status, China's trading partners can protect their own markets by applying large duties on Chinese imports believed to be unfairly dumped on their markets because of low prices. Now, European sectors such as textiles, steel and solar panel manufacturers have been using these large duties in order to protect their industry. But if China is given market economy status, this will no longer be possible. Last month, the European Parliament advised the European Commission against granting China market economy status, and EU member states are divided. One faction led by Britain is for, and the other led by France is against. Now it is up to the European Commission who will have the final say. South Africa is now treating China as a market economy status in its own trade policy and according to the European Union, because South Africa leads work on the commercial policy of the Southern African Customs Union, it is likely that all of its members will be affected in as much as they will not be able to implement anti-dumping measures against China. The Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA, with the Southern African Development Community, SADAC, and the EU was published last month after negotiations finished in July 2014. Now, the EU is the largest trading partner of the SADAC EPA trading bloc, with South Africa accounting for the largest import and exports to the EU. The Economic Partnership Agreement will provide duty and quota-free access for Botswana, Lesotho, Mozambique, Namibia and Swaziland. South Africa will also receive enhanced market access to the EU and in return the EU will get improved access to the entire Southern African Development Communities market. Both parties will also waive any rights to apply agricultural export subsidies to exports traded with one another. Also, the EU will give South African products the exclusivity to use names such as Rooibos, the famous South African tea, and numerous wine names on the EU market. In return, South Africa will give exclusivity to more than 250 names of European products, wines and spirits with geographical indication protection. This economic partnership agreement is expected to be signed in June. The European Parliament organised a public hearing on the EU's gas package last month, which has been dubbed by the European Parliament itself as one of the most important legislative proposals this year. The package includes several pieces of legislation, including new rules on bilateral energy agreements and also strategies around accessing the global market for liquefied natural gas. On bilateral energy agreements, EU countries would be required to notify Brussels before their conclusion. Furthermore, the agreement cannot be signed until the Commission has given its opinion, which needs to be taken into full account. The gas package also uh, focuses on how to better access the global market for liquefied natural gas and how to work closely with potential and current suppliers on the African continent. 
The EU is the biggest gas importer in the world, and imports of oil and gas dominate EU-Africa trade, with Africa accounting for slightly more than a fifth of EU imports of oil and gas in 2014. So it will be important to keep a watchful eye on these proposals. However, it is unlikely that this legislation will be finalised within the next 12 months. Last month, members of the European Parliament urged the EU Commissioner for Agriculture, Phil Hogan, to take measures to stabilise milk prices, including an EU-wide limit on milk production. The Commissioner said that he would review the situation by the end of June and to see what more could be done if necessary. EU milk quotas ended in April last year because of a considerable increase in dairy consumption on the world market, which was set to increase. And the EU quota regime was thought to be preventing EU producers from responding to this growing demand. However, in reality, the ending of the quota has resulted in the overproduction of milk, triggering a collapse in prices not recovered despite a 500 million aid package applied in September last year. And the African dimension is this, both European and African farmers have called on the EU to put a stop to large-scale overproduction of milk because it does put a pressure on prices worldwide. So that's it from me, let's head over to Torilla to find out what's coming up in June. I'm here to tell you what's in the pipeline for EU-Africa relations in June. On 13 and 15 June, the ACP-EU Joint Parliamentary Assembly will discuss the future ACP-EU relations post-2020 when the current ag agreement expires. They will also discuss the African Continental Free Trade Area negotiations, which have recently moved into IGEA with the intention of agreement in 2017. Following on from the May EU Foreign Affairs Council that discussed the external aspects of migration and EU global strategy, the 20, 20, 28 to, to 29 June European Council will, dis, will include a focus on migration. They will discuss the follow-up to Valletta Africa EU Summit, the root causes of migration and economic aspects. Up to 60 billion euros to combat the causes of refugee flight could be on the table. On 23 June, the UK will vote on the EU referendum essentially whether to stay or leave the EU. In the African context, this debate has been centered on UK trade relations with African countries, African migration versus EU migration opportunities, the UK's overall influence on EU policy towards African countries, but also highlighting the impact of the EU's common agricultural policy on African countries. If you want to know more about the Brexit for Africa debate, visit the What's in It for Africa website and watch last month's epi episode Inside the Issue or read the blog. On 15 to 16 June, as part of the annual European Development Days, the EU Africa Business Forum will hold two workshops to discuss how the private sector can be engaged and mobilized to stimulate growth and contribute to the achievements of sustainable development goals in Africa and Europe. The events will feed into the next EU Africa Summit next year. Thank you for watching. If you would like to have more details on June events, contact Uzo or myself and don't forget to watch What's in It for Africa every month to stay up to date. Thank you for watching the EU Africa update show this month. And remember, you can subscribe to our monthly mailing list for even more updates direct to your inbox. See the link in the video description box on YouTube or visit the website to subscribe. And remember, only two more weeks until your next dose of EU Africa current affairs with the Inside the Issue show on tax avoidance. Until then, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, also like our Facebook Facebook page and remember to check us out on Afroland TV and Quick TV Africa. My name is Uzo Madu for What's In It for Africa.